the parable of the law. A man from the country comes to the gate of the law seeking entrance. But before the door to the law, there stands a gatekeeper. The man asks the gatekeeper if he can answer. It's out of the question, the gatekeeper says. The man asks the gatekeeper if he can enter at a later time. Later, perhaps, but right now, it's out of the question. The man, seeing that the door, as always, is open, and that the gatekeeper is standing off to one side, looks past the gatekeeper and looks into the interior of the law. It's almost as if the gatekeeper can read the man's thoughts. The gatekeeper says, you can try to go in if you think it's something that you can do. You can try to override my veto. But be aware that I am a powerful man. And I will tell you something else. Inside the door, down at the end of the hallway, stands a second gatekeeper. And around the corner of the hallway, at the bottom of the stairs, stands a third gatekeeper, and then a fourth gatekeeper, and so on. And I will tell you confidentially, that the third gatekeeper is already so terrible that I can't bear to look at him. Well, the man decides to think it over. He looks at this gatekeeper with his long nose and his hooded tartar's eyes. And he decides to wait a while. The gatekeeper brings a little stool and sets it up so that the man can sit there. And the days and the years go by. And at first, the man tries to engage the gatekeeper in conversation, but the gatekeeper won't answer him. Once in a while, the gatekeeper will ask the man a question in a lordly manner, some insignificant question about a detail of the man's family or his home life. And from time to time, since the man has brought many things with him for his journey, from time to time, he tries to offer the gatekeeper a bribe. And the gatekeeper always takes the bribes and puts them in his sleeve. And then he always says, I am taking this just so you won't feel that you have left anything undone. After a while, the man's strength begins to fail. And he becomes quite childish. He becomes so well acquainted with the fleas in the gatekeeper's collar that he prays to the fleas to intercede for him. And he forgets all of the other gatekeepers and all his ideas and all his interests are centered upon this one gatekeeper. And at last his strength begins to fade from him completely. And he becomes aware of a darkness that surrounds him. And he doesn't know if the darkness comes from his own eyes or comes from the world around him. And then, in the midst of this darkness, he becomes aware of a light that is beginning to stream around the door of the law. That inextinguishable light, that otherworldly light, the light of the law. And the man raises himself up on his elbows to ask one final question with his last strength. One final question of the gatekeeper. How is it that in all the years I've been here, no one else has come seeking entrance to the law but me? How is it that no one else has ever been here? And the gatekeeper, seeing that the man's senses are fading, leans forward and shouts in the man's ear very loudly and very clearly as one would shout to a child who does not understand. That door was made for you. It was made only for you. Only you could have entered in here. I am now going to shut it.